What's going on guys? Welcome back to the C++ tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about arrays. So let's get right into it. Now, arrays are essentially just collections of elements of the same data type. For example, we can go ahead and say, I want an integer array. So I specify int and then my array or any other name followed by square brackets. And inside of those square brackets, we can say how many slots do we want to have in that array? So let's say we allocate 20 slots, for example. Uh, which means that we have an array with 20 spaces for 20 integers. So a space for each of those 20 integers. Uh, and if an integer takes up four byte in this case, we would have uh, 20 times four bytes allocated, which means that we have a section in the memory, in the RAM, in the, in the stack, so to say, where we have the, uh, the array placed inside there. And we can write values and read values from there, but compared to other languages like Java, for example, we can not only do that, we can also go beyond the limits, which is not recommended. We're going to talk about what happens there. Um, but this is something that you can do in C++. You can go beyond the limits. So if you allocate 20 uh, slots, you can also go to 35, for example. But the problem is, of course, is we don't know what happens then. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, but for now, let's look at how we can actually access the individual values here. Um, so let's say we want to print a certain slot. What we do is we say, see out my array and then the respective slot, for example, seven. Uh, now, what you need to know if you have never worked with arrays is that arrays start uh, or the index of an array starts counting at zero and goes up until the size minus one. So the, the, the first index here would be index zero. And the last one would be index 19 if you want to stay in the in the boundaries. Um, and now the problem here is, or it's actually not a problem, but the, the interesting thing here is that we're printing something that we haven't assigned yet. And we just have this array, we've allocated the space, but we haven't set what should be inside of that space. So what we did here, or what the compiler or the system does here is it says, okay, this range here of memory, this, this uh, section here is for this array but we don't do anything. So this section may have already some values in there. It can have values from previous stuff. It can have some random values. It can have zeros, doesn't matter. Uh, we just allocate it, we don't change it. So the values that are in there are still in there. So we can go ahead and see what we get here in this case. Uh, it's totally random and undefined. We cannot really know. Uh, in this case, we get a zero. So let's go ahead with a for loop and print all the values and I equals zero, I less than uh, 20, I plus plus. And we're going to print all of them. And in this case, you can see we have a bunch of random values here. Um, these are all the values that were already inside of that section that we allocated for the array. If we don't want to have all these values still in there, we can also overwrite, uh, overwrite them with zeros by just saying equals and then two empty curly brackets. If we do that and run this again, you will see that it's full of zeros down here, as you can see. So this is uh, one thing that you can do if you care about what's in there in the first place. Uh, we can also go ahead and overwrite the first couple of um, uh, first couple of slots manually. So we can say, for example, I want 10 in there, I want 80 in there, and I want 20 in there, and the rest shall be zero. So we can do it like that. And um, you will see that the first three slots now have these values, and then we have only zeros. So this is how we can create arrays and access the individual fields. So now let's talk about what happens if we go beyond the limit. Now, first of all, let me show you that it actually works. So we can go ahead and say, see out my array uh, 50, even though we have only allocated 20 slots. This works in C++, it, it would not work in Java, for example. I'm not sure if it works in Python. I think Python has some, I think actually it doesn't even work in Python, uh, but in C++ it works. And you can see that we get some value and this is completely undefined. We're somewhere in the memory that does not belong to this array, we can still access it. But what happens when we do it is undefined, it depends on the compiler and the system. Now, most compilers, what they do is when you, for example, um, access 20 or 21, it just goes to the neighboring to the next neighboring uh, spaces in memory. 
but this does not have to be the case. We can end up anywhere and read any values. And of course, the dangerous uh, thing here is that you're not just reading the stuff, you can also write the stuff. So you can say my array um, 50, for example, equals 200. Now, this works. But what happens, we don't know. Now, in this case, it just terminates, which is even more dangerous than if it crashes. Because uh, you can think about this like that. You have the random, uh, random access memory. You have the memory where you have all your uh, variables and important values and also jump back addresses. So when you call a function, for example, and this function has to jump back. So let's say I have some function defined and I uh, call this function here. Uh, what I do is I jump to that function and then I execute the code in the function. And when I reach the end of the function, I need to know where to jump back. I need to know that I need to come back here and continue with the rest of the code, which is down here. And the problem is that um, we have all of this basically stored in the stack, which means that if I overwrite the, uh, if I go beyond the limits of the buffer of the array that I have, I can also overwrite the jump back address. And this can happen by accident, which is uh, dangerous because you don't know what you're overwriting, right? I might have a different variable here, which is very important, int a equals, I don't know, some value here, 10, for example. Uh, I can overwrite that value by writing on this slot, which does not belong to the array anymore. Uh, I can overwrite the jump back address. In the best case, my program crashes and I see that I have done some nonsense because that's really the best case scenario, the program crashes and uh, some error happens and this is it. But the worst case scenario or something that's a little bit worse than that is if it continues to run and you don't know what you have done right now because you know why are you changing this value? What does that even mean? This is some value that's there and you're just changing it. And this is not a good idea and you should never be doing that. And this is also one thing that people do, that hackers do. Uh, it's called buffer overflow. Now it's a little bit more complex than that. But the basic idea is that uh, if you have some input, for example, you have, I don't know, some, uh, I don't know if it works with strings, uh, it, it should work with C strings, but you have some user input here, where you say C in S, and what you do then is you can string copy this into a string buffer, which, uh, or into a character buffer, actually. So you have a certain amount of characters that you can store, let's say you have a buffer and an and character array, like that, character array, of size 50, for example, and then you take some user input that has a different size, it's a dynamic size, and the user passes something that has 100 uh, characters. What happens is you fill up those 50 characters, and then you go beyond that and write what the user has put into the program. Now, this is dangerous because the user can put instructions in there that uh, overwrite the jump back address and then execute the code inside of that buffer here which uh, can lead to all sorts of different hacker attacks. It's called buffer overflow, you can Google it. Uh, it's a very dangerous thing, so you should never go beyond the limits of what you have allocated. Now, one last thing that I wanna show you is that you can also define the size of the array by using a variable. So let's say we have this int a here, and we're going to see in the value of a, and then we're going to allocate a slots, and we can see that, uh, if I go from zero to a plus 10, just to see that after that, it's no longer allocated. We're going to print all the values here. So we're going to say STD. Oh, forgot the STD here. STD C out my array. I STD end line. And you're going to see that we're now going to have those three values here, then a bunch of allocated values of size A, and then we have 10 values that we're going to print that are not allocated. So just that you can see that we have a dynamic size here. So let's choose 60, for example. <clears throat> you can see we have 60 zeros, or actually uh, 57 zeros, or yeah, 57 zeros, or actually why is it 60 in the first place here? Oh, 60 is my input, sorry. And then we have uh, a bunch of unallocated values, the last 10 here. So you can see that uh, we can use this to create a dynamically sized uh, array. However, I don't think that this is supported in all C++ versions or in C even. So sometimes this is not really possible. Sometimes I'm not sure what it depends on compiler or version or standard, uh, but sometimes this does not work unless uh, the integer is a constant integer 
and sometimes uh, you just need to pass um, static values and if you want to have dynamically sized values you need you need to use a function called malloc that we're uh, maybe going to talk about in a future video but in uh, the version I'm using here and maybe in the version you're using at home uh, we can do it like that we can just create an integer assign a value and then use this as the size of the array so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.